Hi, my name is Genevieve Weiser and today I will be looking at an industry that is notorious for bad practice. Fast fashion industry. And more importantly, I will be discussing Shein. Shein was created to compete with brands such as H&M and Zara. And it is a staple among the Gen Z generation. It was born between 1996 and 2012. It's Gen Z's favorite because it's cheap, according to most articles. However, it's also difficult because Gen Z also dislikes the brand because of its unsustainable practices, its blatant exploitation of workers, and some serious allegations posed against the company. So it's a double-edged sword. While most articles say that it's Gen Z's favorite, you can find a lot of Gen Zers out there, myself included, that don't completely agree with the company. In 2008, Shein was founded to be a wedding dress company in China. And Later, it would actually become Shein in 2015 with a rebrand and would start selling fast fashion clothing. And it would go on to compete with brands like Zara and H&M, who had a quick turnaround time of 15 days after it was released on the runway. Shein would do it in a matter of seemingly hours. And this is according to a CNN business article. However, business would continuously and exponentially begin to boom starting in 2020. That was because of the pandemic, social media, and influencers. Then, most recently, in 2022, it was, was dubbed to be a $100 million company, along with the likes of SpaceX and ByteDance, who owns TikTok. However, its low prices should be a red flag because these low prices come at the cost of humans and the environment around us. They, most of the time, the clothing off Shein is treated with very toxic chemicals that can negatively impact the people in the factories and the people wearing them. In addition to this, the low quality of clothing because of the quick turnaround time leads to increased waste and clothes are very quickly disregarded or discarded. So that leads to many issues with where we are today. The human cost is incomprehensible because of its low wage labor, long working hours, exploitation of their workers, and the outrageous quotas, whereas some sources have noted can be up to 500 pieces a day and if not met can lead to pay, pay being docked or other consequences for the workers. In fact, despite, despite this low price and the cost on the environment and ecologically, socially, etc., one of the most important notes is that in congruence with the 2015 UK Modern Slavery Act, Sheehan, quote, failed to satisfy requirements set by the UK, unquote, according to Make Fashion Better in 2022. So that means that Sheehan has some questionable labor practices that could potentially be considered slavery. Exploitation of workers, 101. The fashion industry as a whole is responsible for 10% of carbon emissions every year. This number will only continue to increase with fast fashion brands such as Shein and as they continue to grow and stay growing. Another cost is where workers and customers are subjected to lead and other toxic chemicals and elements in the clothing and factories. And 
It should be noted that lead, especially, can cause actions when young people are exposed to it, such as Flint, Michigan. It's very easy to see where this can be concerning, especially if the clothing is being made in 2023. And there's the cost of the water supply on Earth, especially fresh water, but also to our oceans. According to a Princeton report, quote, it takes 10,000 liters of water to produce one kilogram of cotton, or approximately 3,000 liters of water for one cotton shirt. Furthermore, textile dyeing requires toxic chemicals that subsequently end up in our oceans. Approximately 20% of water waste worldwide is attributed to this process, which accumulates over time." End quote. Therefore, the, most, the more simplistic of arguments would come to the cost of so much clothing on the environment. It's, it's insurmountable the damage that it's doing, especially with freshwater sources and the ocean. In addition to this, the waste of clothing continues to decrease every single year. It is said that on average about, quote, 85% of all textiles go to the dumps each year. Even washing clothes releases 50,000 tons of microfires into the ocean every year, or each year, unquote, according to earth.com. So it's only adding more microplastics into the ocean, which the ocean doesn't need, that life does not need. Therefore, the toll on the environment is only mounting and it's quite frankly, only a short amount of time until it's too late and the, and the boomerang comes back. It's related to Pella's writing on the so-called boomerang effect where currently we may not be seeing the effects, but one day it'll come back at us and it'll have the full and we'll have to face the full force of our actions and the inactions we've taken currently. In addition to this, she and exploits social media and their their customers, as mentioned previously. The main reason that they were promoted so much was because of the haul videos where people would buy a lot of clothing for very cheap and open it up on YouTube or other social media sites because it was easy content and people seemed to like it, thus boosting sales. Then this only grew in popularity because of TikTok and in 2020 it was at a very high rate and only continues to increase over the years. So it's hard to see why people wouldn't like the low price tag, despite all the ethical issues, but it's not sustainable. And well, well, one influencer, Drew Aflo, put it, is that not everyone can afford to shop sustainably and would later write in defense with her partnership with the company that sustainable fashion is a privilege and this is according to a time piece. It's a toxic stance because while well, yes, in the moment, buying less sustainably is easier, it's cheaper, in the end you're only paying for more clothing when that clothing is done being trendy or is falling apart. So hypothetically, you're wasting more money by buying from these companies than you would if you were to buy from more sustainable companies. Well, yes, some of them can be fairly expensive. There are other more sustainable options. For example, going to thr your local thrift store. It's an easy option and you can find good pieces. This jacket, in fact, was from a thrift store. And if you don't like to shop in store, there's also online options such as ThreadUp and Poshmark. ThreadUp is a site that I've actually used before and it's quite simple to navigate. 
Otherwise, make the clothing yourself. You can tailor it to your size, it's more customizable, and quite a bit of the time less expensive than the products even on Shein. So that's something we should also be pushing. Maybe if you can't use a thrift store, maybe try to make it yourself. There's a lot of patterns available and if you like a top, it's very easy to make it. Just by tracing it onto fabric, sewing it up, and you're done. Lastly, Shein has been in the news most recently because they invited influencers, mostly people of color and plus size, to come visit their quote-unquote innovation center. In addition to this, one influencer called Carbonari said that, quote, Shein was the first company to take her on a brand trip, unquote, according to NBC News. Especially in the case of black influencers, it's very difficult for them to get brand deals. So a lot of them jumped on the idea of being able, jumped on the idea of being able to visit someplace or that a brand wanted to partner with them or take them on a brand trip. And a in my opinion, Shein knew this. So they exploited those influencers because they were the least likely to get invited on these brand trips or even just get partnerships in general. So why wouldn't they? However, this only led to backlash against the company and the influencers because it was not well received and it seemed to many people, myself included, that it was more of a propaganda piece than anything to say, in my opinion, that, hey, we're doing better. You're only seeing one of our factories, but you're not gonna see the rest of them. Cause look at how good we're doing right here. But you don't get to see behind the scenes anymore. We're not allowing that again. This is in line with Marx's theories on conflict perspective and how those in power tend to exploit those who aren't. And finally, in closing, I would like to thank you all for sticking around for this amount of time. And it's important to remember that something great in the moment can lead to disaster later on. It's only a matter of time before our inaction can lead to the earth and people dying. It's an environmental issue and a social one as well. It has to be solved and preferably a discontinuation of this company that exploits its workers, exploits its customers, is not sustainable for the environment regardless if they say that they will be. We need change now. That's what we need. We can't afford cheap, fast fashion.